Thursday night. What a special, what a special time, what an opportunity for us. Your Denver Broncos in prime time. It's prime time and everybody gets to watch it, so you're always excited for that. Denver 7 is your place to watch Thursday night football. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hey. As the Broncos get ready to take on the Colts. We just got to get back to that, back on track to stacking those wins. We can get ready to rock and roll and, and, and start stacking uh, W's together. Broncos country, it is almost time to ride. It's going to be a great matchup and we're looking forward to it. Playing in front of our fans, what, what, a, what a great time that's going to be. We got them right where we want them, so uh, we got to go get it. And good evening to you, and thank you for joining us for this hour-long edition of Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Andrew Heal. And I'm Shannon Ogden, and we are glad you're with us. It's almost time for Thursday Night Football, which will air right here on Denver 7. Your Denver Broncos taking on the Indianapolis Colts. Broncos, Colts, it's a it's sort of rodeo tonight <laughs> in prime time. For the Broncos, they desperately will need running back Melvin Gordon to step up his game, especially after losing Javante Williams this season to a knee injury. Now, the Colts are without arguably their best defensive and offensive players in Shaq Leonard and Jonathan Taylor. All right, now it's up to the Broncos to capitalize and get that win before a home crowd. And tonight, we have team coverage on everything you need to know before tonight's matchup. We are live outside in Power Field, and we even brought in traffic anchor Jason Lubert to let you know how traffic is moving downtown. And kicking off our coverage tonight, sports director Lionel Bienvenu. It's great to have Luber in the house, ain't it? All right, here we are, folks. Five games into the season, and the Broncos are facing a must-win to stay relevant in the playoff race and to keep Broncos country from blowing up again. The Colts have the worst offense in the league. They're averaging 14 points a game, one victory in four games. Broncos, on the other hand, are 30th in scoring offense at 16 points a game. Tonight, though, could be, should be, and better be the Broncos breakout game. We need a good blowout, a dominating performance for the world to see. Then they get to take 11 days off before heading to L.A. and Monday Night Football against the Chargers. So it's all set up for you. Let's go live to Empower Field on Mile High. Nick Rothschild and Troy Rank are there. And guys, a lot of dynamics of this game, but none really bigger than the running backs. Melvin Gordon stepping in for the Broncos. Philip Lindsay coming back with the Colts. Yeah, uh, Lionel, we'll talk about Philip Lindsay in just a second, but rare is it that you have a game involving Russell Wilson at, uh, at quarterback on your offense, and the main talking point, Troy, is the running back. Melvin Gordon, I mean, Broncos country has basically had a conniption every time he's touched the ball this year, and for good reason. Nobody active in the NFL has more career fumbles that isn't a quarterback than Melvin Gordon. So tonight I ask you, Troy, what is a realistic expectation for Gordon in this offense as the starting running back? I think I took crazy pills, but I trust him. I think he's going to get 15 carries for 70 yards. He's going to be a guy they lean on. He's got to take care of the football, Nick. It's that simple. He has fumbled in five consecutive games. He has fumbled five times in his last 44 carries. He's got the yips, but I was told by sources, people I trust, that he's in a good headspace. He's got an opportunity here. It might be his last one to prove he can still help and be a contributor. So we'll see. But Melvin Gordon, I think he's going to have a good night. And look, we've seen him have good nights in this Broncos offense over the last few years. And Coach Hackett and some of his teammates spoke to what the problem may be as far as the fumbles go and that they still have belief in Melvin Gordon. I just think it's about finishing the play with the ball tucked up. I mean, it's that simple. Wrist above the elbow, all that kind of stuff. You know, he's he just sometimes wants to get an extra yard, and sometimes it, that's not as important. Um, but he is running hard. There's nobody that works harder than him. He comes out here, does extra drills, the extra work. You know, spends time here. He leaves here late. You know, he's he's dedicated to his craft. That's what's made him one of the best players to play this game in this league for such a long time. What what makes him such a great threat? I think the thing for him too is. Um, you know, he's going to get a lot of reps. He's going to get a lot of play in time. So, um, you know, he's one of those guys, too, once he gets in his groove, watch out. You know, you're going to see different Melvin here coming here um, in the next couple of days and into the weeks. As you know, he's, he's a guy that we need. We, we rely on him. Um, you know, he's dynamic. He's been a, he's been a guy that, that's been, you know, one of the best backs in the league for a very long time. So um, I know he's going to get it right. Um, he's a true pro. Um, and, you know, we all count on him. We know that he's going to do whatever he can to, to get all those feelings and everything out of his mind so when he gets ready and gets that ball in his hand, you know, he's going to pound the rock and go score touchdowns for us. Lionel alluded to it a moment ago, Troy. 
Philip Lindsay, the prodigal son, returns, making his first uh, start, or he won't start, but his first uh, playing time here in Denver since leaving the Broncos a few years ago. He will be elevated to the active roster from the practice squad by the Colts. Troy, will the loudest cheer of the night be when Philip Lindsay comes out on mile high? Well, Broncos fans love him. He's Denver South. He's a CU buff. And he made the all he made Pro Bowl here his rookie year. It's been a tough go since then. He's the backup to the backup, but yes, he is wildly appreciated. Nick. Yeah, the only undrafted offensive rookie to make the Pro Bowl. He did that here. We'll wait and see if uh, Philip Lindsay gets any playing time tonight for the Indianapolis Colts. Back to you. Coming up a little bit later, we'll talk about Nathaniel Hackett, the Broncos head coach, and how important this game is for him to show what he knows what he's doing again in front of another primetime national TV audience. We'll also go one-on-one -on -one with Patrick Sertan, emerging as one of the best players in the entire NFL. Yep, lots to talk about tonight. Thank you, Lionel. And now we want to take it to our traffic anchor, Jason Lubert. Not take it to you. But we're just happy he's here making a Nicole special Brian, appearance. you've changed. <laughs> yes. uh, welcome to the, uh, the PM here. Thank you. So uh, how, how are the roads looking around Mile High? Not great. Well, obviously it's heavy around there. We have a lot of people walking around Mile High. It is not great right now coming from the south side of town. It is super heavy. So right now the drive time around downtown is going to be heaviest, obviously, on Colfax, on Federal. You can see some of that in the drive time right now. Now, this is just from Broadway getting across downtown. There's a crash right here before you get to uh, Colfax, and that's what's setting us off. Look at the drive time out of the Denver Tech Center. An hour and a half right now, so the folks that are trying to get there, they might be a little bit late. Coming off I-70, it actually doesn't look too bad, but after the game, beware of some of the construction that we're going to see there. North side, about a half an hour into downtown, and there's a big wreck coming out of Boulder right now, right there by Superior. So that's causing, unfortunately, guys, some big delays for those folks trying to make their way down to I-25. All right, glad you're here on top of it. Thank you very much. All right, back to Empower Field, which is where we find Denver 7 CB Cotton. And CB, I know you're out there mingling with both Broncos fans and the fans of the competition. And that's absolutely right. More on that in a moment. There is a lot of rivalry out here, though. I want to show you the atmosphere. We're out here on Main Street, which is the south side of Empower Field. It's just absolutely electric. You've got a lot of families out here, a lot of couples. Everybody's just having a good time. People are getting their picture taken. They're going around to different booths, different tents, different activations. All of this just getting everybody amped up for tonight's game. That's the kind of energy we got out here. Also, that friendly rivalry that you mentioned, and I want to introduce you. Oh, our apologies that we aren't able to hear that interview. We're going to get back to that because it sounded very important. It that does. Rivalry. And I, yes, I, I appreciate <laughs> that. So stick around for that part. We uh, will be right on top of Thank that. Thank you, CB. We'll get back to you. Also, just don't forget that Denver 7 is the only broadcast station carrying the Broncos Colts game tonight. Kickoff is at 615. We'll have also a special post game coverage immediately following the game. And that also means programming changes for your favorite ABC shows. You can watch Thursday night premieres of Station 19, Grey's Anatomy and Alaska Daily on our sister station, Local 3, starting at 7. Now, the Broncos are slightly favored to win this game. And I checked with Bet MGM. They're calling the Broncos three and a half point favorites. However, in football, Vegas generally gives home teams three points automatically as a home field advantage. Mm. So the Broncos are actually <laughs> mere half point favored over the Colts. Of course, we'll take any advantage we can get, right? Denver enters the game with two wins, while Indy has just one win and one tie. So today, I'm taking three steps to end this failed approach. A major announcement from the president. Thousands of federal marijuana possession charges being erased. Affordable homes and a health care facility become one. We wanted to make sure we could help as many people as possible. A new center is now open in downtown Denver. And waiting on that pathway to citizenship. Unfortunately, it's still going to be a little while. We're looking deeper at the latest DACA ruling as people get ready to rally outside the state capitol steps. For them, it's, it's really an uncertain and a scary time. 